now. These are five best times to make money. You know what they say, every storm has something or somebody or a favor or an opportunity that it comes with. Now, let me share with you five best times to make good money or we call it the crazy monies as far as cash is concerned. Guess what? This is good Joseph speaking and guess what happens? For the next less than 15 minutes, I'm going to share you all these tips and they have actually helped me a lot. And you can go ahead, like the video, make sure that you subscribe, leave me a comment on the comment section. And that is how we become helpful to each other. All right, let's get into the business. All right, now here we are. See, these are five best times to buy uh, to make some good cash. Now, at the very first time when you can actually make some good cash is when there is a, something called recession, or we call it on recession. On recession, these are very good times when you can be able to make some cash. Or what a recession? Probably you're watching me and you're like, hmm, okay, fine. Okay, what is a recession? Recession simply means I'm gonna use the simplest language. I'm not gonna use the what you call the, the economics language and what have you. In a layman's language, the recession simply means it's a situation where uh, you know the company, or rather not the company, the country's economy is actually on the down drain. It is actually constructing. Uh, what do you call? It's shrinking instead of expanding. For example, there are parameters that are used to measure the growth of an economy. We call them uh, the GDP. GDP percentage, the GDP, the growth, the domestic product, the GDP. We have a lot of things. We have GDP, PDP, PPP, GDP, uh, Nomino, we have Gini, we have HDI. We have a lot of things. Let me just use a simple thing. For example, in Kenya, this uh, last year, Kenya's economy grew by 5.6%, 5.6%. And that is a very great rate, okay? Um, it's projected to grow at around the same price or the same GDP rate at around 5.7%. See, now, growth, growth means percentage. When you put everything that happens in that country what is sold what is bought and all those kind of things the economic production in that given company country is actually measured by this percentage and countries actually manage to or try to target the positive growth is when the economy is expanding expanding and expanding so by the situation where it is actually going down during the COVID-19 era you find some countries who are constructing uh, even below you know two percent some even three some even five percent you find the GDP of a company for example the GDP of Kenya as we speak around uh, right now is around 117 billion US 117 billion US dollars or something of sort and I stand corrected, right? Depends, I'm getting those figures from the Google and what have you. So you find instead of it growing by 5%, maybe to reach by maybe 20, 22, 23, you find that it's actually going down. So during that era, how can you tell we are on a recession? Obviously, the news will be all over the place. Oh, we are on recession and what have you. Sometimes politicians may hide this, but if you're smart, you can actually tell the inflation is actually going high. You realize some of the things, uh, some companies are, are going down. They cannot be able to maintain the the workforce that they have there is a retrenchment of the workers and what have you so when the moment you realize those kind of things the economy is going down if you are smart enough and you have the purchasing power you can actually make some cash this is why you find most of the wealthy people they buy their properties for example there's something like uh, I was watching some news and there is this big company from China. I don't know, it's called Avagrand. You know, it's a company that engages in the construction of real estate and what have you. A time comes in a country when you realize that it's something called the bubble burst. Maybe say in the real estate, you have too much, you know, production, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, real estate in line and they do not have occupancy. Guess what happens now when the demand is low? obviously the price goes down okay see whenever there is a such recession you realize that people are not concentrating on the things like uh, for example there is something called the marginal propensity to save as again, I'm going to use a very simple language. You find like, um, let's say we are living in a tough economic times. Therefore, you find people are concentrating on the basic things, the food, the shelter, the clothing, and maybe transport. Those things that matters a lot, maybe health care, the school fees for the education, and that kind of a thing. They're not going beyond of, hey, I want to buy a home, I want to buy a car, I want to buy a nice suit, suit and what have you. So those things, the demand goes down. And when the demand goes down, then it means the price goes down. When the price goes down, those people who have the capacity, they can be able to buy. That's why you find that during the recessions, uh, wealthy people buy shares, buy stocks, and what have you. You people are saying, don't buy shares, are going down. That's the best time. You buy when people are not showing up to the world, to the marketplace. And maybe that point, I can actually combine it with what you call uh, the second one, the market crash. There's something called the market crash. Market crash is when you realize that some companies are really, 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 really going down, especially the PLCs. That is the public listed companies, meaning the company 
one is that you can be able to buy equities or shares or stocks depends with your english whether it's a british english or american english so what happens is that whenever the moment you realize that the market is really going down is crashing that we had like like we had on the 2008 uh the the, the, the economic crisis and what have you so those are the best time that you can actually buy stocks and shares let me just give you a very simple tip you see the moment most of the people are saying hey the shares of our x and so and why companies are really going down do not buy shares and what have you nobody's been talking about the shares nobody's talking about the stocks and what have you that is the best time to actually show up there and be able to buy thou shall never go to a shop and shop when everyone is at the shop why because you're creating a big demand and obviously when the demand is high the price goes high and if the price goes high most of the people tend not to afford it during the recession on when the, there is a market crash let me just put them into two because they are kind of inseparable in a way so you realize that in this kind of case scenarios you people don't concentrate on those things these are the when these guys buy this thing and when because recession don't last for long recession goes for like two months three months four months at most or something of sort depends with the country that you come from because there are some countries that they are forever on recession so what happens is that when the recession is over they actually there is some what you call the upward trajectory the prices are actually going very high up and when they go up then obviously people tend to have some money in the pocket they're thinking about hey wow i think now i'm have some money i would like to buy a property but you're buying when everyone is at the shop therefore it means the price goes up and that's why we say the gap keep on growing bigger and bigger that's why the wealthy becomes wealthy and the poor remains to be poor that is basically what happens by the way let me just ask you a very simple question hmm. Let's say today you win a million dollars and you want to get yourself into selling the construction materials. So where will you buy those construction materials? You obviously go to somebody who how, how you know you know already is selling at a wholesale and they have a big production line. So therefore before you become wealthy they are already wealthy. So you push them. For example say you still want to start a very uh, you want to start an, an average or sizable grocery store. So you simply need to go to someone who has a bigger than yours so that you can get the product to sell. So first of all they get the money before you get yours. So I mean these are simple things, okay? I hope I made sense on that. Let's go to the point number 3. The point number 3, uh, when to make money, uh, the best time to make money is simply when uh, there is something called the bear market. The bear market. The bear market is simply means the downward market or nose diving market, okay? Now, nose diving market here, we simply mean uh, in terms of for those who people trade commodities, for those who trade a uh, precious metal, for those people who trade things like um, oil, there are people who even trade corn, wheat, there are people who even trade their uh, golds and what have you. See, that that is the best see bear market um is simply a market when you know things are going those diving you know it's just going down see when they are going down when they are down below there there is always have that tendency of coming back market never remains just on and is diving throughout the life no it goes down revives and goes back to upwards so you can actually pick it up there where it is actually down there and be different unique from the rest and you pick it up from there and actually you can elevate with it and you move with it to the next level so during the bear market show up to the shop and you can be able to buy something at a quite a good surprise uh, price and then you can be able to hold on it and be able to and this is when we say don't wait to buy you buy and wait and that is exactly how you do it and then after some times you can uh, resell whatever you bought maybe in terms of shares and then you can be able to get the capital gain the difference between how much you bought and how much you're selling that's what we call the capital gain because simply on shares or stocks we actually earn in two ways uh, we have the dividends that's uh, when the company share the profit that they have made out of their you know investments that they have done and two is the capital gain is when the stocks of that given company is actually as appreciated in pricing term uh, for example let's say uh, the price was around a dollar or two and then it's around three or four or something then you can be able to resell that whatever thing that you own and then you can be able to make some cash all right let's go to the point number four the point number four is none other than you having what we call um a distressed a distressed a distressed seller scenario what does it mean a distressed seller scenario um this is a thing that I wouldn't pray for anyone. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. I, I will never, never, ever, ever, ever in my life uh, pray for somebody to be in the situation that I'm about to discuss because it's quite disheartening. It's not even quite disheartening. It's actually disheartening. Um, you can actually be in a situation whereby uh, you find somebody selling something. Maybe they have uh, something. I'm not going to give those examples because it's quite weird. Uh, but you have somebody who's maybe selling a business. Maybe they want uh, some cash. 
uh, maybe some you can find a situation whereby somebody wants to go abroad or overseas and they're looking for cash. Not that their business is not doing good, but uh, you know you need the money as of now, and uh, you cannot operate the business when you're overseas. At that kind of scenario, the person needs the money. That's a distressed sell, distressed seller, and you can tap that opportunity, get that opportunity thing. For example, I have a friend of mine who bought a car from an individual who uh, it's called a distressed a distressed seller was selling that car, and the amount of money that car was being sold is actually way way less that car was below by 400,000 Kenyan shillings compared to the current market because the guy was in need of that money okay I'm not gonna say the reason why he was in need of that money uh, but the situation the fact remains on a very 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 serious note uh, as, 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 as a guy who you interested in making money that's obviously is an opportunity you're not manipulating them in the situation ship that they are in that is forcing them to actually liquidate that specific thing that they own be it an asset or whichever it is, then you can be able to tap that specific thing and be able to make some cash. The worst thing that you can ever do is to put somebody in that case scenario to create that artificial distress so that you can be able to buy that thing at a throwaway price. That is market manipulation and it's the worst thing. Actually, you can even face uh, uh, the law can be even against you because that is not exactly what we do. Back then during the 19 or 1800, people used to do exactly that. If you can go read uh, or watch some documentaries about economy is if you're so much interested on you can understand how they used to manipulate the markets and what have you but in 21st century you don't really do exactly that but anyway if such opportunity comes before you you can actually tap it and be able to get an opportunity and be able to make some cash in that case scenario so my guys distress seller scenario you can be for example you might find somebody who is selling a piece of land uh, this person needs that piece of land again uh, maybe somebody wants to take a kid to university or very big school and something of sort of which probably you watched my previous video i said you shouldn't sell your land to pay school fees okay and you can go there watch it substantively so to get that information let's say somebody is in that case scenario obviously these guys they need that money to do uh that school fees paying and what have you therefore you can be able to tap that opportunity and uh, make something out of the situation so the thing is as far as you're a business individual always be keen cautious and careful whenever you're buying these kind of things because some of them are actually framed or oh, distressed seller scenario and whatever but indeed, they're not a distress seller scenario. So be very, very careful. It's like when you go to buy a second-hand car and they usually you know, uh, put a tagline there, hey, it's a lady-driven car and what have you, accident-free, everything. You know, they say, uh, there's a term they, they use, they say it's an accident-free. There's another term they usually say when you buy a car, you know, um, I forgot that thing. Anyway, you can put it on the comment section. So that is the case number four. We got the case number five. And the case number five is quite interesting. Anytime. It is any time. What do I mean? Yeah, I talked about the best times to make good money. Any time is the best time. All right? Any time is the best time. We don't have an isolated case where we can say, hey, you know what? Uh, at the morning, at no, 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 no. Any time is the best time. And maybe you can borrow this from the example of, you know what they say? Best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. And the next best time to plant a tree, guess when it is? It's now. It's the best time to plant the next tree. So the point is, at any given moment, you can be able to make money. Because, guess what? All the four things that I've discussed, they happen each and every day. For example, right now, as you speak, there is a distressed seller scenario. It's only that you do not have uh, I mean, uh, I mean, a whole of that. So be able to read um, the newspapers. For example, in Kenya, the newspapers, there is always a section of the auctioneers. If you go to those people who usually offer what we call uh, the Shylocks, the auctioneers, you can get somebody who maybe had bought something they are unable to pay the thing has actually gotten for them. Uh, you, you, you can go to those places. You can actually get all these opportunities. A market crash, obviously, you need to watch news and observe news and such. A bear market, you have to also watch news and what have you. So these opportunities are always there at any given moment. So that's why I've said at any time, it's actually the best time to make some cash. That's good, Joseph speaking. And I'm delighted you coming here to watch my videos at all the time. And make sure that you can go ahead if you'd like to get my services or my booklets about investments. They are ready. Go grab that number of mine from the description of this specific video. Shoot me a call. Let's talk business. Nice. Goodbye. See you in the next time.